As you may know by now, my videos are usually educational and not product related. This time, however, I have a mixture of product descriptions and theoretic background knowledge. It's about truss cubes, which are called differently depending on the brand that's manufacturing them. Within our group, they are called Dado when it's a LiTeX product, Box Corner for ProLite and MultiCube for Milos and JTE. Tomcat corners are designed differently, which is why this video does not refer to them. These cubes are available in two versions, light duty and heavy duty. So where are the differences between them and why is one more expensive than the other? And for you as a user, I believe the most important question would be, is it worth to spend more money for the heavy duty version? As already mentioned in several other educational videos on our trussing and rigging television channel www.a4i.tv, the main tubes in straight truss are responsible for the transmission of axial forces and bending moments, and the diagonals absorb the shear forces. So let's see what happens when a cube is used as junction in a horizontal truss grid. A total of six cubes are assembled in this simple rig, which is made of LiTeX 290mm truss. My following explanation refers to the two cubes in the center of the span. Due to the applied loads, a positive bending moment is experienced in the middle of the span. This bending moment results in pressure in the top main cord and tension in the bottom main cord. In this particular case, there is no shear force experienced at this cube's location, so we don't need to speak about this now. That means the strength of the cube is defined exclusively by the ability of the main cord to resist actual forces. The standard light duty cubes consist of eight solid aluminium blocks and special extruded main tubes, which have a channel in the middle. The connection between these components is made with a hexagon socket screw which is guided through the small cube and bolted into the channel of the main tube. The visible thread in the corners of the cubes are required to externally connect male or female connectors with a bolt. Therefore, the inner bolt is smaller than the outer bolt. Due to this fact, the inner bolt withstand less force than the truss that can be connected to it. So, it's important to know that the standard cubes can absorb about 90% of the bending capacity of a regular truss with 50 by 2 mm main cords when installed in a horizontal rig. If it's installed in a grid in combination with heavy duty truss with 48 by 3 mm main cords, the cube's load bearing capacity is only about 50% of the capacity of the truss. The heavy-duty cube, on the other hand, is designed differently. The connection between the individual elements of the cubes is designed internally stronger, which allows the cube to absorb whatever forces come from the truss. And it doesn't matter whether you are using regular or heavy-duty truss. Let's have a look now to another application. The cube can also be used as a lag connection. Here's an illustration of a fixed lag ground support made of 290 mm truss. As was shown in the first example, we can see a positive bending moment between the two multi-cubes in the middle of the span. However, a negative bending moment occurs at the top of the lag, meaning in the corner of the frame. This means that opposite to the middle of the span, tensile forces are experienced in the upper and compressive forces in the lower main cord. To avoid complicated explanations, I'll now neglect the shear force, which also acts in the horizontal truss. If the cube would not include a diagonal, the tensile force in the upper main cords would cause the cube to deform from a square to a parallelogram. However, the diagonals in the cube prevent this displacement, as they would have to become longer or shorter, which would lead to compressive or tensile forces. It seems clear then that the strength of the diagonals decisively determines the strength of the cube when it comes to the transferring bending moments from the grid to the lag. But why is the diagonal in a heavy-duty cube thicker than on the one found in regular truss? 
The compressive and tensile forces in the diagonals caused by the bending moment are very large. The diagonal in standard cubes is made of 16 or 20 mm tube. However, this tube is only capable of absorbing approximately 15 to 25 percent of the bending moment transferred from the connected truss. It's different with the heavy duty cube, which is made with a 32 mm diagonal. Therefore, it can take 30 to 50 percent of the truss bending capacity, so it has double the strength compared with a regular cube. Now it is important to mention that ProLite offers a heavy-duty cube that has the full load capacity of the truss even around the corner. However, it no longer looks like a truss. The remaining question is, when to use what type of cube? Eric Porter, of whom you can also find many videos on A4i.tv about practical rigging, once told me that I li act like a lawyer. I resented this comparison at first, but later on I liked his explanation. He said that an engineer is like a lawyer, because if you ask a lawyer a simple question, you don't get a clear, simple answer. Instead, he comes back with five questions for you, so he can properly understand the, to judge the exact circumstances from where your question arises. The same is true with the structural engineer. There are many factors to consider when using cubes. Therefore, I can't give a clear, defined answer, but a, at least a rough recommendation. My, important to say, non-binding recommendation is to use for fixed lag ground supports the regular light duty cubes only. If you have an indoor installation with a span of no more than six meters and low loading requirements. When using it for a horizontal truss grid, you need to make sure to load the truss to significantly less than 50% of its capacity. Otherwise, you should always use a heavy duty cube. More exact and binding recommendations require an individual calculation, which we are of course happy to make for your project. See you!